to a new episode of the New Leaf Podcast, which is my podcast about knitting, crocheting, and my journey as a full-time knitwear and crochet designer. My name is Carmen, and you'll probably want to ask about what I've added in the background. I hope it stays up for at least a bit of the podcast, because it's just blocking pins taped to the wall with washi tape. Yes. So, very um, basic MacGyvering, uh, yeah, but fingers crossed it stays put. So this is my Chevron Boulevard shawl. I was going to say Chevron Rainbow, but that's the Chev Rainbow blanket. I wonder if this was a good idea because I can't show you up close, although I can take you there. <laughs> My Chevron Boulevard shawl. It's a crochet pattern and it is out today. <laughs> so this crochet pattern was first uh, published in Inside Crochet number 128. Um, and now the copyright has been returned, so I can publish it in my own pattern stores as well. So today is launch day. Um, it is available in my Ravelry store and also in my own New Leaf web shop, which is newleafdesigns.nl. Um, and I'll link everything below in the description box. If you're watching this um, on your TV, then um, you can find this podcast episode on your phone and then click through. Um, because I don't think you can see the description box if you watch YouTube via your TV or Switch console or whatever. So yes, <laughs> bit of an experiment. I really hope it stays put, uh, but I thought it was just a great way to show this because um, this shawl is huge and I cannot... <laughs> stretch it out completely with my arms um, it's as long as I am so it's uh, 1 meter 65 I'm actually one eighty-five. Uh, so this shawl is longer than me and it's 165 both this way and that way <laughs> It's a really big shawl, so you can wrap yourself up in it. It's it's quite an unusual shape, so it takes some getting used to, but um, it's just... I can't wait for summer because I've made this... Um, I've actually made this last summer, but then I had to ship it as soon as I finished it. Um, to the magazine to Inside Crochet and then it got published in September and around that time I got it back as well but I couldn't wear it because um, it was getting too cold outside. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the summer this year so I can wear this shawl and it's um, so it uses a Scapey Swirl gradient cake. You might see one here in my closet. Um, and so the gradient, it's a little bit striped because you alternate the Scapey Swirl gradient cake with another yarn. And that other yarn is uh, it's, um, lace weight. It's Scapey Sugar Rush. So one strand is Scapey Swirl and the other strand is Scapey Maxi. And I used four balls of Scapey Sugar Rush, which is the 50 gram of... Um, quantity. You also have 25 grams. Now this is a little bit less because I've already used a little bit. Um, but you have it in 50 grams which is called Sugar Rush and you have it in 25 grams which is called Sweet Treat. Um, and it's a, well it's a lace weight cotton. Um, I was actually thinking of, com of using Scapey Swirl with mohair for this shawl but uh, this lace weight cotton is just it's very smooth um it's i i just think it's way more appropriate for a summer shawl because mohair tends to be a little bit too warm and this um scapey's max yarn is also way easier to crochet because i love knitting with mohair um 
and single stranded it, it gets a little bit more difficult and for crochet I find that it gets even more difficult also because it's um, it won't be that easy to unravel so for those reasons I decided to not go for more hair but to um, go for this lace weight cotton instead um, you can't really see it here um, but the because the scapey swirl is a little bit thicker it's it's a fingering weight and this is a lace weight so um, and you use the same size hook throughout so the rows where you've used the lace weight they become a little bit translucent and it's just very very beautiful um, I'll actually pop a picture in um, by inside crochet where you can see the translucent effect a little bit better um, and I just I just love it I I love the solid and sheer effect I love that the gradient is striped um, so that you know you elongate the effect of the gradient um, and you you know scapius world they have so many colorways and I just think it would be amazing um, with any of them um, and I was thinking if you use two scapius worlds together instead of one whirl and one color of this um, lace weight. If you use two whirls together, then you get two gradients. And, you know, I, I love having two sets of gradient ingredients. Um, you'll see that in my Shiv Rainbow blanket. You'll see that in my uh, Rainbow Sea Waves blanket. Um, yeah, I just, I just love the effect. And, um, yeah, patterns with multiple colorways of Scapius World combined have been super, super popular. If you um, think of a Tammy's, um, Tammy from Canada, she has designed some gorgeous shawl patterns a few years ago. Um, one is called Read Between the Lines, and I will put pictures up on the screen. So Read Between the Lines is an illusion, um, illusion effect. Uh, knitting pattern and she also has a crochet version of that uh, which is called crochet between the lines um, and these shawls used two different colorways of whirl used together in one shawl and yeah it was amazing because at first we thought okay well these colorways kind of go together um, and they make this beautiful shawl but then uh, people started joining in it was a make along or yeah a make along because there's a crochet and knit um, pattern so people could either either crochet or knit along and people would go for these world combinations that we were just like huh <laughs> and uh, and they worked um, it was so so beautiful so um, thinking about that shawl I'm just really curious to see how this shawl would look with two escapees worlds um, yeah, but for for the magazine, um, they wanted a more, um, uh, I, I think the theme at the time was actually beach. So that's also uh, why the name um, Chevron Boulevard came to be, because I just, you know, I just imagined this boulevard along the... Um, along the beach, uh, you know, either in France or in the States, you know, the Monica Pier or whatever. Um, and then you would just walk along this boulevard with this shawl draped across your shoulders very elegantly. It was just, yeah, that was the idea. So I thought, okay, I better keep the um, color of this shawl, um, not toned down, but uh, more, that's the right word. I didn't want to use too many colors because I wanted to have it really, I wanted to affect to be really elegant. Um, yeah, so that was how this shawl came to be. And I'm really looking forward to wearing it again this year. And yeah, it is out now. So it's in my Ravelry store and in my new leaf web shop at Chevron Boulevard Shawl. So please go and see it and like it, heart it, whatever, share it, comment, um, and buy it. <laughs> um, 
And thank you so much for everyone who has said such lovely words about the pattern already. Um, oh right, and I should add it is available in UK English, in US English, and also in Dutch. Um, there is a difference be between UK and US uh, crochet terms. There is no such distinction in knitting patterns, but there is in crochet patterns. Um, I usually write in US terms, but since the magazine um, is based in the UK, it had to be in UK terms, so that's why I have both now. Um, yeah, and then also in Dutch because I am Dutch and <laughs> I know people will be asking for the Dutch version. So those are up in my pattern store. And I want to say a huge thank you in advance if you want to purchase the pattern. Every purchase is very, very much appreciated and yeah, it keeps my business running. So yay! So that was some news I wanted to share before I get into the projects that I've been working on this past week. Um, I have my progress board here and I have wiped off the um, the projects that I finished, the rainbow stripe socks and the um, toe up gusset heel socks. And I've just wiped it off without any, um, usually I use a nail polish remover. <laughs> um, it has the same kind of alcohol that people usually use to uh, clean these boards with. Uh, but now I just used a uh, dry cloth, so that's why you still see the blue residue here. So I have the Spectre sweater, the Scrappy socks, and the Wild Strawberry socks. I didn't uh, work on these, but I am going to tell you a bit more. Um, because someone had a question about the version that I was making. And let me also share what I am wearing. I am wearing my pink sweater. Um, this is my own pattern. It's a free pattern on my blog. Um, there's also a paid PDF version if you want to see no ads or if you want to have an easy printable. So it's um, relatively cropped. So this, oh, there went the shawl. <laughs> okay, hmm. I think I'm just gonna gonna take it off because I know it will fall down again. So here you have it up close. <laughs> okay, but I've talked enough about this shawl. So the pink sweater, uh, you can find it on my website as the pink sweater. Um, it was inspired by a song by Janelle Monae, um, which is called Pink. Um, and yeah, it's a cropped sweater, but you also have a um, longer version. So you have a petite version and a um, regular version. Um, I added the petite because I am petite. <laughs> uh, it's a boxy shape. Um, you knit it in pieces. So you knit the front, you knit the back, and then um, you sew these up, and then you knit the sleeves in the round. There is a I card bind off here. The sleeves are quite straight. Um, yeah, but I just really like that. If you want to do some more decreases, of course you can do it. And the collar or the neckline is um, folded, so it's kind of um, yeah. I just really like how this looks. It looks um, almost store bought. And then the shoulders. They are, can't even see the seam, I think it's here. It's um, seamed together um, with a three needle bind off. So actually the shoulder seam is knit. Um, so yeah, it's a super easy pattern. Um, I would highly recommend it as your first sweater pattern. It uses a DK weight yarn and a mohair. But you could also just use one strand at a worst weight. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing. Okay, and now I'll share some more about the wild strawberry socks because someone had a question about them. Um, I think their name was DK, but I'm not sure if that is an alias because it sounds like the yarn weight DK and I thought it was a really cool nickname, but maybe it's really that person's name. Uh, if so, you have a really cool name. Um, 
So DK asked, um, will you share a um, updated version of the pattern? Because the original Wild Strawberry Socks um, are color work. And in fact, these are the original Wild Strawberry Socks. I've kept them, I've kept them uh, to the side because um, there was some damage. Yes, here. There was some damage here and I wanted to mend it, but then I thought, oh, I can make this in a tutorial video. So then I put it off until I don't know when. <laughs> but uh, these are the wild strawberry socks and they are, um, they have a color work pattern mixed with um, knit and pearl. And um, that is that together is called the Bohas Technique. So uh, it's not an official Bohas pattern, but uh, the Bohas Technique uh, from Sweden originally uses color work together with pearl stitches uh, so that you get this really fun effect. Um, and this is the same pattern. So for this sock, I just used the texture pattern without changing color. So it is the same pattern. It just looks completely different. Um, the only thing that is not in the pattern is that I'm knitting these socks cuff down. Uh, the pattern for the wild strawberry socks is toe up, which is also my preferred way of knitting socks. Um, and I just I just wanted to do something different this time. Um, <laughs> they have been on the, on the needles for a while um, because I don't really like doing cuff down. Um, but, you know, the way the pattern is written, you can totally um, knit them cuff down. You just have to... Um, well, actually, you, you can just do that because um, you knit the cuff, you start the texture pattern, and the short row heel, the way that it is written, you can use it for both toe up or cuff down socks. It works exactly the same way. Uh, only the toe decreases would be different. Because on toe up socks, there are no decreases, only increases. So, um, yeah, but you can totally reverse engineer this pattern to make it work for cuff down socks. Uh, and I don't know if this was also a question by DK um, that was in the same YouTube comment, but I also got a question if I will be doing a tutorial video for the um, linen stitch heel flap. Um, and I actually think that's a, that is a really good idea, so I will be thinking about that. Um, but since I don't have a lot of experience with knitting heel flaps, I think I wanted to do a couple more before I do a tutorial video on that. So that's, uh, those were the questions for the Wild Strawberry Socks. And by the way, I am using a hand dyed yarn um, that is dyed by um, Mina Dye Works, um, who is the mother of uh, Lily, who owns Sticks and Cups yarn store in Utrecht. So if you go to Sticks and Cups, then uh, you will be able to find her hand dyed yarn. So no progress on those. I do have a little bit of progress on the scrappy socks. Um, I put in the heel. I was thinking, should I also do a scrappy heel? But I thought that would be too much. So, um, and also, this way is much, much easier. So I just did a one color heel. Um, yeah, I don't have much progress. I was here last time. So I knit a couple stripes and then I did the heel and that's it. But I really love how they look so far. They remind me of like a coloring book or um, they remind me of drawings in a children's book. I don't know. It's just, um, I love them. 
So I will be continuing knitting the socks. I'll um, I'll be taking next week off. So I hope to be um, finishing these socks then as well. Um, and I have completed the um, scrappy socks tutorial, which will be going up on my Patreon page first, and then after a while it will be available on my YouTube channel as well. But my patrons get first dibs on the tutorial. Yeah, so this is just super fun. And uh, before you're thinking, wow, that's a lot of sewing in ends, I did not sew in any of these ends. Um, well, I did a couple at the toe and for the heel, but um, most of them, they are woven in um, by knitting over them. So It's, uh, it's using the same technique as wrapping floats for color work knitting. Um, and the rest um, you'll have to find out in the tutorial video. So I'll be working on these two. Oh, and yeah, I'll <laughs> mark my progress even though it's not very much. Um, and the yarn that I'm using for this is Scapius Metropolis. I used their, there they go, I used their um, mini pack which contains 80 colors uh, for my around the world sweater last year. The color pack is not really available at the moment. I'm not sure if they will be bringing it back. I hope so. Uh, but Skippy's Metropolis is still available um, as 50 gram balls. It's just a really nice sock yarn. It's you know, solid colored, 75% um, merino, 25% nylon, really nice, uh, really soft too. And yeah, that's what I'm using for my socks. So um, yeah, I'll just add a little bit more. <laughs> not really, um, not really a lot. Um, yeah, I think it's about this. Not a lot of progress, but um, I have much more progress on the other whips that I'm about to show you. All right, are you ready? I am so excited for this next project. Can you guess what it is yet? It is my fade project, the Spectre Sweater. There are a lot of yarns attached, so I'm careful with getting it out. I've added quite a bit since last time. Last time I was just getting into the um, orange, so I think it was about here. So I added all of this. I am now working on color 22. So I have two more colors after this, and I actually have to check the pattern um, whether there's ribbing at the bottom, because I forgot. Um, because you're basically just working the same pattern in the body and you're knitting it from the inside out. So it's basically knit stitches. It works up really, really quickly. And I actually saw that someone else is also uh, knitting a Spectre sweater with the Advent calendar by Wolmuth Um and she had so Sylvia died two different advent calendars last year. One was um, Earthly Whispers, which is this one, and one was bright and quirky, and someone is knitting up the Spectre sweater with that advent calendar. So I'm really curious to see. Um, and yes. I don't just have to check the pattern if I, um, if I want to switch to ribbing, but I also want to check if it's maybe getting too long. Because, yeah, I'm quite short, so I need to check if I, st if I can use the um, other two colors. Uh, so the final two colors are these. So this is 23 with a little bit of orange left in there, and this is 24. Oh, so beautiful. Um, 
so yes I will have to see about that if I can if I can use all of them um, oh, I just think it's so pretty um, and I also worked a little bit on the sleeves so the sleeves are up to date as well or one of them is the other one I still have to start And I'm still knitting this, um, so I've tied the yarn to the um, circular. I'm still using my short circular here, and it was less annoying this time around. Um, so who knows? I just want to wear this. So yes, one of the other things that I hopefully will be finishing next week in my little holiday um, I'm not going anywhere, I'm just taking time off, um, because I didn't really take time off over Christmas. Um, I had planned to take time off then, because it was the logical, um, time to take time off. Um, but I had two deadlines on the 4th of January, so, like, being the bad planner that I am, I worked through the whole Christmas holiday. Um, even if it just was a couple hours a day. So I thought, okay, I have to practice with um, <laughs> taking time off and actually sticking to it. So next week I am taking off. Yes, but uh, tell me what you think. And... Um, yeah, and then next time I'll hopefully be wearing this. The The size is still looking to be the correct size. So um, for those who didn't follow this pattern from the start or this project, um, I am using a tighter gauge, uh, which means that I am knitting three or four sizes up. And for now, it's looking as if it's not too big. Um, so yeah, fingers crossed it will fit very nicely. Um, I did calculate it to be a little bit oversized because um, a sweater with vertical lines um, needs to have a bit of positive ease on me in order to be flattering. I don't like the word flattering because it implies that you have to hide some parts of yourself um, but you know for my own comfort I would prefer it to be a little bit more positive ease so yes that is uh, the Spectre sweater um, here I have a bit more progress uh, to mark up so what do you guys think um, I was I is that a halfway a little bit over halfway uh, so I'm almost done with the body I'm halfway done with one sleeve and then one other sleeve left to go. So would you say is that 75% done? Let's say it is 75%. Ta-da! And then now for my last project. I have a new cast on and um, I cast this on last Friday so it is now almost or it is now one week old because it is Thursday now um, you're not going to believe it I'm just gonna show you um, do you remember me talking about the knit collage pattern last week um, so I bought the pattern pixelated cardi but I am striping my yarns so that I'm I'm not following the color work pattern um, I'm doing stripes so I am using wool and the gang crazy sexy wool in a purple haze colorway even though it is icy blue there is not really a purple to be seen um, but I love it nonetheless and I am using up some of my stash um, this was also deep stash I think I've had this yarn for five or six years uh, so I'm glad I'm finally using it uh, and I'm also using my own hand spun yarns I'm using 
this, this, um, a little bit of this. So I've all, already knit a couple rows with that and um, it goes so quickly. Um, I'm using this. Um, I used a yellow portion and a blue portion. So this this color. I'm trying not to use the orange. Um, I don't. I just <laughs> orange is not just just really not my color. Um, I don't know. I think it has to do with that. It's the national color. You know, the our royal family is called the Van Oranges. And then, you know, I also associated with uh, football, like soccer, um, or soccer team. I just, <laughs> it's just a very cliche color here. But now seeing, you know, Gigi made it, so Gay Glassby with fabulous orange clothes, I thought, hmm, might be time for me to reevaluate the orange color. Um, yes, but um, I've not used it yet. Um, and then I also just have some stash of uh, Aran Wade yarns that I'm holding together. Um, this is some of my hand dyed. It's uh, thick and thin yarn, so I'm using these together. It's just really, really fun. In, in a way, this is also a scrappy project. And you're not going to believe how far I am already with this project. From last Friday, okay? Um, Ta-da! I've already split for the sleeves and I'm halfway through the body. It's amazing. It's amazing! So, just to recap, I am using the pixelated Cardi pattern. And then uh, I'm using, I'm doing three rows in this color and then two rows in another color. And then I switch back to this for three rows. Yeah, so let me show you the um, different sections up close. So I have my hand spun here. The really bulky one and then the pink one which I've used um, I've used three strands here so two of my hand spun and then one commercial yarn here I've also used three strands one of those is a sparkly yarn yeah I've, and for the hand spun sections I've used two or three strands held together to get the same thickness. And I especially love this new section here. That is these two together with, where is it, with this one. Yes, and um, so I'm, I don't think I'm going to make it too long because with these bulky cardigans, uh, they often look a bit better if they are a bit cropped. Um, yeah, so I don't know how much longer I have to go. And then there's the big question um, of which side to use as the right side because, um, well... I've knitted as if this side is the right side, but then I saw the inside and I thought, ooh, I actually really like that. Um, I don't know, it just gives some more texture and more stripes. It's kind of the same dilemma as with the uh, rainbow striped socks. 
uh, where I picked the pearl side as the right side. But for this one, I'm I'm not sure because I do think that the right the knit side uh, showcases the um, hand spun yarn better. So I think I'm gonna use this side. I'm just going to um, try it on for you. I wonder if it will fit over my sweater. Um. <laughs> So the, uh, I hope it's still on the needles. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so here it is. So the sleeves are like flaring right now, um, but that's because they are on the scrap yarn. Yeah, I did uh, put some more stitches on the uh, sleeves. So because usually, um, usually sleeves are too tight for me. So I just put some more stitches from the body to the sleeves. Also because the size that I that I am knitting is actually too large for me. So um, so knit collage. Uh, this pattern is available in four inch increments. Um, so it was 38 inch, well it starts at 32, but 38 inch and then 42, 46, 50, 54, like that. Um, and they advise to go with a size that gives you 2 inches of positive ease, which for me would be a 40 inch size, but um, there is no 48, uh, 40, um, inch size so I now have four inches of positive ease um, so that's why I took some stitches of the body to the sleeves because I know uh, I knew that the body was probably going to be too big um, and the sleeves were probably going to be too tight so that's why I moved these stitches around um, and yeah, it's it's really straightforward actually. Um, at the end, you're gonna crochet around the um, edge to give it a nice edging, but I'm not sure if I will do that. We'll, we will see. Um, yeah, and it's just really easy. It is knit on 12 millimeter needles. I don't know what the U.S. size is. Um, and it goes really quickly. So I've only knit this over a couple of days. And I love it. So um, I was trying to recreate the kaleidoscope cardigan pattern, uh, which is more stripes actually. Um, my stripes are actually quite big. Um, so they don't really look like that pattern, but I also wanted to use up most of this yarn. Um, uh, but the kaleidoscope cardigan pattern wasn't available yet because it was part of a knit along and, it, and the pattern um, for the first couple of months it's exclusive to the people who participate in the knit along. Um, so I have bought a different cardigan that was already available. I thought, well, I'll just uh, strike my yarns then because it didn't look very different to me. Um, and it seems like it's working out, so I'm happy with that. So <laughs> sorry to knit collage if um, they think that is inappropriate um, info to share because, you know, reverse engineering patterns is okay if you do that for yourself, but sometimes if you share the information, you know, it can be a little bit disrespectful, um, but you know, I had to buy a pattern anyway, so I thought maybe it doesn't matter to them whether I buy the one pattern or the other, um, since I'm not using their yarns anyway. Uh, yeah, but I, I am just loving it. Um, the pattern is um, very clear, it's written for a lot of sizes. Um, 
yeah so I am excited to finish this as well and hopefully I will have a bunch of finished objects to show you in two weeks when I will podcast again so I have a work in progress to add to my whip board so um, I will call this the hand spun cardi and I would say I am at about 70 80 percent let's say 70 because I still have the sleeves to do even though that will fly by um, there we go <laughs> So that is all from me today. I hope you're all having a great day. Um, we sure had some amazing news this week with Kamala Harris as the first female vice president. So it was just really, really exciting to see all of those news stories pop up and the coats, the wool coats. I just, I can't even. And uh, Bernie Sanders with his wool mittens that were uh, reclaimed from old wool sweaters. I just such wholesome stories but um yes i hope you have a great week um and i will see you in two weeks uh where i will hopefully have a lot to show you and who knows it might even be a live episode i will keep you updated about that um i hope you enjoyed this episode um and i hope to see you next time all right bye bye